Hello, welcome to the self learning platform by Dr. Shishma Singh. Today we start unit 4 decision making institutions and our topic is National Security Council. The Indian foreign or national security policy making generally suffers from two main drawbacks. One, it is highly ad hoc and second, it lacks effective policy coordination. Dinesh Singh, who was the Minister of External Affairs under Mrs. Gandhi, said that during his tenure, much of the foreign policy involved responding to others rather than determining proactively the Indian policy. For this, the regions are not far to seek. PMs, particularly Nehru, Mrs. Gandhi and Rajiv Gandhi thought they had answers to every crisis. However, a minister can never be an expert like the trained foreign service officers. He must give enough weightage to the views expressed by the ministry officials. Prime Minister Nehru was a towering personality and during his lifetime he decided national security himself alone. At the most sometimes he consulted one or the other confidence on a specific issue. He did not appoint a full-time foreign minister. Thus, for instance, in the 1950s, he relied on Krishna Menon, who was for some time minister for defense in his cabinet. Mrs. Gandhi consulted when she thought it necessary a few of her trusted men in the government. There has been always from the beginning some suggestions for an organized system of foreign or national security policy making. K.P. Mishra and K. Subramaniam were among the earliest to suggest the setting up of a national security council. K.P. Mishra mentioned about the need for expert advisory committee and also a need for policy planning. But Subramaniam had stressed on creating a policy formulating sectoriate rather than policy discussing council. This was mainly because a cabinet system provides for collective policy making. Then existing Cabinet Committee on Political Affairs, CCPA, was considered as a counterpart of the National Security Council, NSE, in the U.S. as a deliberative body. But J. Bandopadhyay, in his Making of India's Foreign Policy, pleaded for the creation of a foreign policy council on the American model. But whenever we speak in favor of a NSC for India, we are aware of the fact that ours is a plural executive and already there exists a collective decision making mechanism. However, the experience shows that the Prime Ministers, if they so choose, may not hold for the meeting of the CCPA. After 1991, then PM Narsimha Rao faced internal challenge to his leadership from Arjun Singh, who was then the Human Resource Minister. After 1993, Narsimha Rao did not call any meeting of the CCPA 
as he did not wish to have Arjun Singh in it. Thus, there was no institutional and organized discussion during the term of Narsi Maharao. Therefore, NSC had to be legislated by an act of the parliament instead of being created by an executive order. As a result of public demand, practically all the political parties were in favor of India establishing a National Security Council for policy making. Finally, the Vajpayee government in 1998 established it. The National Security Council consists of the PM as the chairman and ministers for external affairs defense, home, finance and deputy chairman, planning commission as its member. It includes several experts like scientific advisor to the defense minister nominated expert in the field of defense and security strategist several retired foreign service officers, academics, senior bureaucrats, and service chiefs. However, ministers are busy politicians who will not have sufficient time to think in advance regarding problems, which could arise in the security decision making. Thus, there is a strategic core group. This group consists of three service chiefs, secretaries of principal departments represented in the NSC, and the chiefs of intelligence bureau and RAW. The NSC needs a secretariat to be effective, but the government has provided the Joint Intelligence Committee, JIC to double up as the Secretariat of the NSC. Finally, for a NSC to be successful, it needs an official who, in consultation with the PM, would coordinate all inputs in the policy making. The present scheme provides for the principal secretary of the PM to act as the National Security Advisor. The scheme also provides for a National Security Advisory Board, NSAB. This board, when set up in 1998, included 27 members. Its members include academics, journalists, defense analysts, and key public figures. Among those who constituted the board were eminent people like K. Subramaniam, J. N. Dikshit, and many other prominent figures. While National Security Council is headed by Brijesh Mishra, PM Principal Secretary and National Security Advisor, the National Security Advisory Board was headed by K. Subramaniam. The first task assigned to the NSAB was to prepare a draft nuclear doctrine. This task was completed when the details of nuclear doctrine were announced in August 1999. The NSC thus created appears to be reluctantly created and sparingly used by the government. Some of its limitations can be mentioned here. First, it is not regularly used in decision making. After it was created for the first time, it met to consider the Kargil crisis on 8th June 1999. 
almost one month after the crisis broke out. After Kargil, many foreign policy crises have occurred, like the crisis in Fiji, Iceland, where a prime minister of the Indian origin was dethroned by a military coup, or the continued ethnic crisis in Sri Lanka where the Sri Lankan government tried to seek a military solution to the problem. But it was the CCS which considered the crisis. Another occasion when the NSC was convened is to consider post-Kashmir election scenario in JNK after the election in October 2002. Sometimes the explanation offered for not using the NSE is very strange. Often the justification given for not convening the NSE is that it is only an advisory body. The crucial decision on the national security is taken in the CCS, which is a cabinet subcommittee. If the contention that NSC itself is an advisory body, then the question is why create a national security advisory board? Incidentally, NSAB has government appointed mostly retired officials who were in the union government and are residents in New Delhi. The Cargill Committee appointed to study as to what went wrong in the Cargill crisis and suggest ways to improve the decision making suggested that the work of the NSE must be streamlined. Secondly, the NSE has to be created by the law of parliament and not by the executive order on the ground that the NSC must have a reasonable guarantee of subviabilities. But the Cabinet Committee on Political Affairs, which met to decide on foreign and national security policy, as stated earlier, never met since 1993. During the tenure of Narsimha Rao for three years, as Rao did not wish to have Arjun Singh, then the human resource minister attend it. Of course, even NSE is legally established, it may still be not summoned to meet if a PM is determined not to hold its meeting. But in such situation, at least those who are affected by PM's approach could create public opinion against it. Third, for the NSC to be successful mechanism in policy making, it has to have an independent secretariat. The Joint Intelligence Committee JIC cannot perform that function. One thing is that the national security pol policy is not merely a coordinated intelligence. It is much more than that. As it is past, chairman says that in the JIC meetings, directors of various intelligence agencies do not wish to share raw intelligence data possessed by them. They desire to share it with only the highest policy makers. In such a situation, it will not be able to coordinate national security policy where inputs from other ministries like defense, external affairs, home, etc. needed to be coordinated. Fourth, the NSE needs a full-time national security advisor or call him director or by 
whatever name. The principal secretary to PM is itself a full-time job. As the former PM Indra Kumar Gujral said, the principal secretary to PA Prime Minister is always overloaded with work that he will have no time left to devote to think in terms of coordinated holistic manner on the issue of national security. The Cargill Committee had also recommended the appointment of an independent national security advisor. Fifth, the NSAB is filled with mostly retired foreign service and military officials that too based in New Delhi. National security has, however, a regional angle as well. Members based in New Delhi will not be able to understand the regional sensitivities in a policy affecting the people of a region. For instance, if NSAB is discussing about India's policy on ethnic crisis in Sri Lanka, it is better that someone represent the regional sensibilities in the discussion. Even if a person belong to the region, if he has been a resident of Delhi, he would be a poor second choice to air his views on the crisis. The problem with any innovative suggestion in the revitalizing of the NSC is that the existing bureaucracy is unable to accept any dilution of their individual powers. Now we want to wind up this lecture and thank you so much for your attention.